Is IVF an option for Christian couples? Ooh. That is a big ethical, biblical, and very personal and emotional question. Yeah, before I grab my Bible, let's just talk about the topic in general. IVF is in vitro fertilization. Um, in vitro, I believe, is the Latin for in glass. So a fertilization that happens in, in glass, in a lab, uh, instead of in the womb, in the, the normal and natural process when husband and wife come together. Now, why would anyone consider this? It, it's because there are so many couples. I know my wife and I have the same passion in our heart that deeply desired starting a family and having children. But for some couples, there's hiccups in that process. There's struggles with infertility. And if that's you, you know the weight of this question. If you so desperately want to be a mom, if for so many years you've, you've dreamed of being a father or a grandfather, having your family around the table, and you're struggling to start a family, this is a huge question. What options do I have as a follower of Jesus? I don't want to sin, but I really do want a son. Is IVF an option for Christian couples? Well, I maybe don't have to tell you that there is great both cultural and church debate about this question. Uh, the reason is because we believe when we open the Bibles that we find that God doesn't start caring about life or call something life after the birth has actually happened. Maybe the most famous passage when it comes to conception and life and abortion and fertilization is in Psalm 139 where King David says this, God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Notice that David doesn't say, in my mother's womb, God, you knit some like non-me, pre-me version of me. No, he says, you knit me together. The, the same David who was David when he was born was David pre-birth. So if you ever wondered why so many Christians are pro-life, if, if we think it's not just tissue inside of a pregnant woman, but it's a real life that God has created. It, you know, it's not just the separate DNA that leads us to that conclusion, although there's some great scientific backing. It's passages like this where, where God himself says he values life and it begins at conception. So let's talk about IVF, in vitro fertilization. I'm, I'm far from an expert on the process, but my understanding is that you take a bunch of eggs from a woman and you take the sperm of a man and then in, in glass, in vitro, you bring the two together. And when they come together, then you Im implant that fertilized egg back in the mother and you see what happens. Okay. Um, you know, up to that point, we wouldn't say that there's a chapter or a verse that would say, no, don't do that. Some people would say, well, is this not the natural process that God wanted? Are we putting too much faith in science and technology instead of the general way that God invented it? Well, that, that's a fair discussion point, but I don't think that's a black and white prohibition in the scriptures. But here's where things get tricky. When you really want a family and when a fertility doctor really wants to be successful, uh, very likely you don't just take one egg and one sperm and bring them together. It, it's a very complex a difficult and expensive process. So normally what do they do? They take two or four or five or, or many, many eggs. They try to fertilize as many as possible and, and then they can have a bunch of rounds in case the first one doesn't work or the second one doesn't work. And this is where things get really difficult for Christians because what happens if I have 10 fertilized eggs and the first one works and I have my baby? But now I have these nine other eggs that have been fertilized by a spouse's sperm, well, well, what then? Do I just throw them in a freezer and leave them there forever? Do we destroy those lives that God has begun? For many Christians, this is the tension, that, that we don't want to support something where a fertilized egg, a life that God has begun, would be discarded like it's somehow not life. So is IVF an option for Christian couples? I think the biblical answer is it is an option but only if it's done in a biblical direction. Only if it's done truly valuing the joining of sperm and egg as the beginning of life and protecting every single life at all costs. I would say to a Christian couple, don't fertilize more eggs than you're willing to bear and carry in your own body. I, I can't imagine the emotion of this 
that you just want a son, but please do not idolize the starting of a family to the point that you would be willing to end a life that God has created. Instead, entrust your future to God. If he blesses you through the process with a child or two or, or four or five, praise God. And if you end up not having children, know that your life is not over. And that God still has great plans even for infertile couples. That God will open other doors for you if you can't bear your own children to love other children. Let's make sure we, we worship God alone and don't idolize the perfect picture of a family in our own heads. That will allow us to make good, wise, and biblical decisions as we think about fertility in general and IVF in particular.